The following is an exclusive presentation of WI Garden Media, the voice of Garden Talk Radio. Coming up on the program today, it's going to be about container gardening. We're going to give you some advice to help your containers grow better, as well as should you grow that. We'll explain, and our guest is soil and tree expert Lawrence Alberti, and we'll answer your garden questions. That's all coming up next. You are listening to the most informationally packed hour of garden-focused radio in the country and on the internet with your host, husband and wife team, Joey and Holly Baird. This is the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show. And welcome to the Garden with Joey and Holly radio show. We're happy that you are being part of the program today. Keep us company over the next hour. I am your host, Joy Baird. Beside me is my wife, co-host, best friend and gardening partner, Holly Baird. This program is for you, about you, to help your garden grow better, to maintain your landscape, grow healthier trees, as well as preserving what you grow and make that grass look a little bit greener. Whether you're listening to us on one of the 18 AM and FM frequencies broadcasting our program here in 2022 through a radio app, through our parent website, the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, under the Season 6 tab at the top of the page, podcast replay, in-studio video replay, a lot of ways you can capture the program. However you're doing it, we thank you for that. If you'd like to participate in the program, well, you can certainly do that. We encourage that. We welcome that. You can do that in two different ways. One being you can send us an email to GardenTalkRadio at gmail.com. That's GardenTalkRadio at gmail.com. Or if you'd like to give us a call, you can certainly do that on the Proclamation Hotline brought to you by Proclamation Goods. That number is 1-800-927-SHOW. 1-800-927-7469. The Proclamation Goods creates cookware for the eco-conscious home chef. Their pans are non-toxic, have a lifetime warranty, and are made in Wisconsin. Their award-winning stainless steel Proclamation Duo cookware set is a 12-inch skillet and a stock pot that doubles as a wok. Best of all, the skillet and stock pot hinge together to form a Dutch oven. It's two pans with a versatility of 10, empowering you to cook more with less. If you care about your health and to strive for a more sustainable lifestyle, then Proclamation Goods is for you. Supplies limited, so order yours now at proclamationgoods.com. Proclamation Goods. Absolutely. Well, we're going to get in the program, and we're going to go over container gardening. Now, many people may not be... Um, may not have the ground to grow in, or it's they're choosing to not you know, build a raised bed. They want something small, or they're in a, a situation where they can't do a large garden. Well, container gardening certainly is a very viable option. This definitely is, and it's something that you and I did when we were um, apartment living for a few years. And yes. And it was... It was fun, and this is something we still do now. Well, I don't know if it was fun. It was uh, something to uh, figure out what to do and what not to do, something to do for a little bit. I thought it was fun. Well, I mean, yes, but it wasn't wasn't something that we were bringing buckets full of harvest in order to process. No. You can do that in containers. Yeah, certainly. You certainly can, and people get really creative with their container growing processes. Whether this being straw bale. Mm-hmm. A bucket with holes in it, a root maker grow bag, or oh, even something oh, like that rain gutter. Rain gutter, yeah, yeah. Uh, any, any kind of any type of system. Now, there's some things that we're going to go over to maybe uh, help you out the uh, in the container gardening uh, project that maybe you're not thinking about or you've overlooked. Uh, we, we're here to help you, so you don't make the mistake. So we've made them for you, so you don't have to. And one being just as you would in the ground lighting. Where is the light at? And what time of year that light is available? This is something definitely to consider, especially if you are, if you have the option of putting your containers, containers essentially wherever you, essentially wherever you want. So if you have, maybe you don't want to commit to raised beds in the ground or something like that. And you're like, I'm going to try some containers, see how this goes. And you can move those containers around. You can definitely think about where you want to put the light. Now, if you have a, a limited... If, if the container is mobile. mobile, right. Right, right, right. So but what I'm saying is that you can try, you know, to grow something right. now, and then next season maybe you want to change that up. And that also falls into the next category, the size of the container. Now, 
uh, there's no, uh, obviously, the, 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 the question is, how big do I need or how small? The larger the container you can get, the better off you are. Whether you're growing tomatoes, potatoes, peppers, or anything else, the larger the container, the better. Now, Root Maker Grow Bags, RootMaker.com, they have, now they have a new 100-gallon grow bag. 40, I think it's 42 inches across and 20 inches high. Now, if you're growing vegetables, you don't need to fill all 20 inches high. You'd fill it probably 12, 15, uh, but it gives you a lot of versatility. And, and they've got a variety of one to now 100-gallon grow bags and pop-up raised beds. At, that's RootMaker.com. Use coupon code RADIO22 to save 15% off your order. One thing I wanted to mention is that if you are if you are new to gardening or um, maybe there's crop that you know that's going to be invasive like mint and, or even dill, but dill is tricky because it reseeds pretty quickly. But if it's something that maybe you just want to try and hang it from your, you know, the eve of your porch or something, you can definitely do that in a container. Right. And if you if you hang it from the eve of your porch, something like dill isn't necessarily going to reseed all over the place because it might just, the seeds might just fall into your porch. Now, we want to talk about what type of material do you grow in? Potting soil, compost, yes and yes. If you're doing smaller grow bags or containers, buying a couple of bags at your garden center, not a big deal. If you're growing in 60 gallons and 100 gallon grow bags and pop-up raised beds, the you want to look at what is available in your area, your local independent garden center, what kind of uh, bulk material, because those things take quite a bit of soil when you start using four or five, six of them across your backyard. Right. And that is something that you should you should definitely consider is purchasing um, bulk material to to have you could have it delivered or you could go pick it up. But it is going to save you money. And whenever you just and you're thinking, well, I don't have a truck or a trailer. I have gone to the garden center and filled up bags and buckets and put in the back seat and the trunk of the car. It is doable. People don't look at you or laugh because every, we've all done it. We use what we have. It is doable. You can get about a half a yard of compost in buckets and bags in the back seat and in the trunk of a of a standard uh, two door. Car. Sedan, yeah, coop, whatever it's called. Yeah, watering too. We right. got we got to talk about watering. Right. Here. So whatever your method is to get your your um your medium to grow in, definitely do that. And then watering. Th now watering, you do have to do at times, especially during the peak of the summer, more frequently. So you might have to water in the morning and at night, or and sometimes midday. Or you can you can set up a irrigation system, uh, such as drip works, or if you want something that doesn't require pipes, hoses, or anything like that, tree diaper works well for containers. We we've done it uh, with squash, and it's worked phenomenal. Uh, you also want to. Another a, a, a thing, I guess, a warning you need to be aware of when growing in containers is unlike in the ground or a raised bed, as you water, as it rains, there is nutrients that leach out or follow or, or attach themselves to water molecules and get flushed out of that container. So you have to feed your soil. Now, you can do that with the Climate Guard fertilizer. You can do it with simple grow worm castings. You can just top the bed, you know, give a couple of more scoops of compost to it or, or potting mix. But that can be why you may be seeing uh, discoloration in your plants because the nutrients is being leached out or washed out of the container. Many people don't think about that, Holly. Yeah, definitely. It's something you want to think about is the process of overwatering or underwatering, and it's very important and we highly recommend irrigation. You might think that's a little bit extra <laughs> or excessive for container plants, but it's really not. And there's a lot of irrigation options. Right. And you say it might be a little extra. But here, think of this. You're going to go buy the vegetables or the fruits in which you're trying to grow because they're dead because you forgot to water them. If you buy an irrigation system, drip works or, or, or tree diaper, and they are hydrated, you buy some money up front for those particular devices to keep your plants alive so you can have a continuous harvest all season long. And then next year, you don't have to buy them anymore. Or the year after, they pay for themselves and your plants aren't dead. And you're not having to go to the grocery store to buy those tomatoes or peppers during the summer months. 
Absolutely. So that, well, and you should probably go to the farmer's market anyway. But Ex- Yeah, exactly. But yes, you, it's an advantage to invest that time, or not, I'm sorry, time, money. Well, I guess it is time. Everything, yeah. Everything into irrigation. And if consider- you got a hobby and you play golf or you collect cars or, or you hunt or whatever, you're dumping a lot of money into that. Just like gardening, it's a hobby or sometimes people consider it being a must in order to supplement or decrease the food bill by growing a lot of what you can. You can. So it's the same thing. It's an investment. It pays itself back. And when you hunt, you know, you, you get an animal or you fish or you, you collect cars, you flip it for cash and you buy another. So it's just like well, anything sometimes else. Sometimes people just collect cars right. to collect cars. But yeah, and that's... Whatever your hobby is, gardening is certainly a hobby, and I think it's the number two hobby? Number one. Number one now, yeah. okay. Hobby in, in the United States. So there's plenty of ways to invest. and. But how do we hold the water into the containers? Mulch. With, with the container. With the container. <laughs> mulch. People may not make people think, oh, I can mulch the raised bed, I can mulch the, the flower bed, the, the ground, but they don't think about the mulching of the container. Now this can be anything from shredded leaves to pine needles, which are not acidic. They are acidic, but by the time they break down to pine a comp- tones. pine tones, uh, by the time the pine needles break down to a usable compostable form, it's neutralized. So you don't have to worry about the soil being acidic. That's a garden myth for those who may be following that trend. Um, chemical free seed free grass clippings, shredded paper, even a layer of we've done this. We've done this. We've gone and got a we we're, we're close to the lake, and you can do this at your own risk. You get some sand, however you acquire the sand, and you <laughs> put an inch. You have a large container. And you put an inch of sand over top of the soil around the plant. What happens on the beach? The top of the sand is dry, but underneath it's very moist. It's a mulch. Take it for what it's worth. Now this is not something that you want to do. And you you don't want to put sand in your raised beds because it's going to no it's going to mix in and that would not be good. Container gardens it's fine because you are it, going to it's a free resource. It is a free resource, mm-hmm. um, and you do want to be mindful of where you're getting your sand from, and be respectable to to your source. So some people keep that in mind. you know it gets dark and you can do what you want when it gets dark in order to obtain certain things. Or you have an adventuring wife who knows of secret right. beaches. So, with yes. that said, um, <laughs> what what is not a secret is Walton's Incorporated. They they provide you with a multitude of different devices. Whether you're a butcher, a fisher person, uh, a fisherman, fisher individual, fisher person, fisher person, or you are a cook and you want good quality seasoning and tools to use on your barbecue grill or in your kitchen. Walton's got all. Walton's Incorporated has all of that taken care of for you. Yeah, Walton's. They, we are brought to you today by our sponsor, Walton's Inc. Listen, we know you care about where your food comes from, canning, preserving your fruits and vegetables. We we love that. But what about the meat? At Walton's Inc., you can get all the equipment, seasoning, and supplies to make sausage, jerky, and any other meat product your way to your high standards. Do you want to make snack sticks that people will actually like? Walton's created meatjistics.com, an informational site to help you make the best finished product. They have everything from meat grinders, mixers, sausage stuffers to help you go from animal to edible. You know, people are even feeding their uh, pets raw food and they need grinders People are for that. feeding their pets better than they're feeding their children in some instances. Yes. Yeah. So you can get those <laughs> meat grinders to feed your pet their raw diet at Walton's Inc. And you, if you want, for whatever you're using these these uh, wonderful products for, you can use code GROW20, GROW50. That's GROW50 to save 10% off of orders, $50 or more, and get free shipping. That's waltonsinc.com or meatgistics.com. Well, hang out. When we come back, we're going to go over that question, should you grow that? We'll explain. Stay with us. You're listening to the Garden with Joey and Holly radio show. Got a question for Joey and Holly? Send it via email anytime to gardentalkradio at gmail.com. Protect your outdoor furniture, fire pits, grills, and more with custom covers from CoversAndAll.com. Springtime means you don't know what the weather is going to do. Rain, sun, snow, ice, maybe everything in 48 hours. Covers and All's durable custom covers protects against it all. They've got a bunch of fabrics to choose from, and each one can be customized to fit any style, size, or shape to keep your outdoor furniture looking brand new year-round. Visit them at CoversAndAll.com and use code GARDEN20 
25 at checkout to save 25% off your purchase. Show your body and Monarch Butterfly some love with Milkweed Balm, made with milkweed seed oil to promote relaxation and muscle recovery, full of antioxidants and packed with powerful omega fatty acids to fight pain and inflammation. Milkweed Balm is product-based conservation of wild monarch butterfly habitat. Visit milkweedbalm.com to find out more. A non-selective herbicide that is also USDA certified? You bet. No more weeds by Naturally Green Products. The same great company that brings you no more bugs, no more weeds. Kills weeds with no harsh chemicals, no glyphosate. No More Weeds is a commercial grade vinegar base with a propriety sticking agent. Great around pools, decks, patios, etc. Visit natgreenproducts.com, enter promo code WEEDS, W E E D S, and buy three one gallon size units, get the fourth one free. Introducing the Johnny Appleseed Authentic Algeo Apple Tree, grafted from the last known surviving tree planted by the real Johnny Appleseed. The Johnny Appleseed Authentic Algeo Apple Tree was shepherded through nearly 200 years of American history by a family of rural Ohio farmers. Now you can grow this one-of-a-kind heirloom tree right in your own backyard. Order your tree today at shopjohnnyappleseed.com. That's shopjohnnyappleseed.com. Rootmaker starts your plants off right and keeps them going through harvest. From their seed starting trays with an innovative design that air prunes the roots to their large variety of grow bags, 1 to 60 gallons. Their products will provide you with the harvest that you've never seen before. Visit rootmaker.com and use coupon code RADIO22 to save 15% off your order. That's rootmaker.com. Chapin has the tools you need to water, feed, and protect your garden. We make equipment for lawn and garden care and we are always innovating to help make your next growing season a success our newest products are the 5010 rose duster watering tools including hose nozzles sprinklers and timers the mixes on exit backpack sprayer that mixes concentrate as you spray you can find all products at www.chapinmfg.com major online retailers home improvement stores and hardware stores near you if you could double the life of your raised bed boxes by sealing the wood with a clear non-toxic wood preservative would you well now you can with a clear penetrating product called internal wood stabilizer it's 100 non-toxic and easy to apply seal your untreated wood surfaces even chicken coops by spraying on internal wood stabilizer it's invisible seals the wood from the inside out and never wears off. Recommended by organic gardening experts, internal wood stabilizer. Check it out at TimberProCoatingsUSA.com. Make watering easy. DripWorks provides quality drip irrigation supplies and equipment to gardeners just like you for all your growing needs across the U.S. and Canada. Purchase online at DripWorks.com. Thanks for listening to the Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show. As you've heard through the program, many companies offering coupon codes to help you save on great products. If you've missed any of those coupon codes, you can go to our parent website, thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com, and click on the Money tab at the top of the page, and they're all listed for you. The Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show is brought to you by the following. Pro Plugger, Chip Drop, Bell Buster, Johnny Appleseed, Ivy Organic, Milkweed Balm, Waltons Incorporated, Bloomin' Easy Plants, Jung Seeds. Find all sponsors at thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com and thank them for their support. Welcome back to the Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show. We always appreciate when you participate in the program, whether you're listening, calling in, emailing, you're just being with us. Thank you for that. Another thing, Holly, we talked about earlier in the previous segment about watering, keeping your containers watered, and you can use the tree diaper for that whether you're in containers, in the ground, in the house, or anywhere in between, the tree diaper has it made for you. Yeah, tree diaper is a revolutionary watering system that slowly releases water around the base of any tree or plant as the soil dries. The tree diaper is filled with water from rain or when you water and slowly releases water over three weeks. No more overwatering or underwatering with the tree diaper. Every time it rains, tree diaper recharges, no pipes, hoses, or electricity needed. Water your plants and trees, whether they are by the house, down the road, or in the back 40. Also works under mulch. Whether you're a first-time gardener or advanced, Tree Diaper will improve the way you water your plants. Made in the USA. You can see all the sizes and options they have available at TreeDiaper.com. That's TreeDiaper.com. And we were, we, I stepped out in the garden uh, the other day, and the Tree Diapers, which can be left outside all winter long, they were fully hydrated, and they were ready to 
do their next job this uh, this growing season. Um, but fully hydrated, not they weren't damaged at all. Everything was fine with them, so they are ready to go. Well, you might be ready to go to plant some things, but uh, we're this this next segment is our opinion. You see these news programs opinionated, you know, opinion this, opinion that. That's strictly what this segment is for. We we're going to tell you things why you shouldn't grow certain things. And if you decide to grow all of them, that's fine. We that we're just telling you why we have chosen not to grow these certain items. We got a lot of problems with these people. Well, I don't have a lot of problems with our listeners. I got a lot of problems with the people who are not listening. That's who I have the problem with. Yeah. yeah. So tell your friends to tune in the program. <laughs> so the, again, this is our opinion. So yes. you can, and if you have a strong feeling about this, I mean, you can certainly give us a call or send us an email. And uh, Garden Talk Radio Gmail dot com one eight hundred nine two seven s h o w, and uh, let us know what you think. If you think we're out of line or right in line, this one I have opinions about. All right, go onions. ahead. Now we enjoy growing onions; they're fun to grow, and we've had phenomenal. We've had a phenomenal crop. Um, I don't know, a few years in a row. Yeah, yeah. We got you know full sun in the raised beds, nice uh, loose, loomy soil. Big bulbed, big bulbed onions. Yep. But um, sometimes starting them is a bear. Well, it, it, that's true. And whether you have started them right now, you're looking at them, or you're going, hey, I got them in the greenhouse or in the grow light. That's that's fine. The reason why this is on our list is simply because onions for us, they take 90 to 120 days. And unless you're growing like hundreds and hundreds of square feet, in our opinion, it doesn't really work in the favor of uh, value. Value When you can go to the farmer's market or you can go to the, your organic garden store, or grocery store or, or big box store and get five or 10 pounds for a couple of dollars. It's one of those things, and, and this is going to be a repeating uh, phrase on this segment, is I can't grow it that cheap. Right. And that is, that is you know, the point we have um, reached. And sometimes, yeah, sometimes you just can't grow it that cheap. So that brings us to potatoes, which is another excellent point. And I just, um, I know that you can grow specific types of potatoes that you may like whether they be like the purple ones or finger those, links or yeah you know. finger links and those are those can be costly mm-hmm. you know organically or whatever um at the organic food store or the organic se- section of your grocery store but at the farmers market they are reasonable and we can't grow i mean we we can put potatoes in the ground and we can harvest potatoes but we can't get that that yield that some of you are able to do. You put one potato in the ground, you get seven coming back. We usually uh, get one or one return or two for every one we put in the ground. Now at your at your sister's yeah, my sister's house. She it was she's decent, had, yeah, pretty good harvest. But it's not, you know you look on these YouTube videos of of legitimate true gardeners. You know they're not gimmicky or anything, and they're getting you know three, five, ten pounds in return type of thing. Um, so again, you can buy pretty cheap the potatoes um if you get if you know where to go and you they're not poisoned and all that sprayed with stuff the growth inhibitors and then the next two broccoli and cauliflower you we ha- you have to enjoy broccoli and cauliflower well i do <laughs> it's not that i don't it's just that um sometimes my my body doesn't enjoy it so but with we that being said, we've never been able to grow no, broccoli and cauliflower no, never we have not and even if we were capable of doing such a broccoli and a cauliflower plant take up about the same amount of ground space as a tomato plant, give or take a few inches. You're getting one head of cabbage or one or one head of cauliflower, one head of uh, broccoli in the same platform or same square footage as you would get 10 to 20 pounds of tomatoes. So... And you buy the, it used to be, and I don't know, dollar and a half, two dollars at the farmer's market for a head of broccoli or cauliflower. It, you know, it really depends on the day and, and the week and whatnot. But ca- cabbage, you would yeah. think, oh, cabbage would fall on this. Cabbage, you get a head of, you get a four or five pound head of cabbage, you can do a lot with that cabbage, and it goes a long way versus a head of broccoli or cauliflower. Cabbage is dense. Right. Yeah. But that that's what, you know, you can, 10 or 20 pounds of tomatoes or one head of broccoli or cauliflower that's what we're looking at here now yes the next one strawberries i i would have to disagree 
Because when we had our strawberry patch, right, it was prolific yeah, for we, a few years. We had in-ground, and uh, strawberries in-ground typically last about five to seven years. Ours peaked around the four-year mark, and we had, I think it was 138 square feet of strawberries. And it wasn't row, like you'd see at a pick-your-own-farm. It wasn't a row this, row. It was just like yard. It was just strawberries. It was chaos. And, but it, and, and but they, they did, they did yeah, produce. We were getting 15 yes. and 20, 25 pounds a year off that patch. Now, if you don't have the space to establish a 150, 160, 200 square foot strawberry patch, then the investment of going to the pick-your-own-farm is practical. The other thing that I have an issue with some people is growing them in containers. And whether you're doing the June bearing or the ever bearing, here is where I'm my my philosophy of this comes from. It's a waste of time because you're babying these plants for 28 weeks grow season and then they go dormant over the winter for approximately 2 to 3 weeks of strawberries and if you don't have a very large container you're basically getting a bowl a, a cereal bowl full of strawberries over the course of fighting with these plants to keep them alive all year long for a bowl cereal bowl you know dozen or so strawberries doesn't make sense leaf lettuce green beans something else in that container can be much more return on investment better than a couple of strawberry plants that you've got to keep alive all year long I, yeah, I don't I don't disagree. And pick your own farms. They are a lot of fun to go to, and they good prices they, and great quality yeah, product. Yeah, they're good prices, great quality. And then even if you just want to run past the farm stand, that's that's fine too. So I shouldn't say I disagree, but I think that you know if you have never grown strawberries and you want to try it, I think you should go for it. So the next one is sweet corn, which um, sweet corn growing your own sweet corn is fun. And if it's if it provides you a nice harvest, it is delicious. Takes a lot of takes, nutrients. Yeah, it takes a lot of nutrients. We, I, we I remember we like bulked up yeah. our soil hardcore. Uh huh. Yeah, it was like I'm pulling numbers, but it wasn't too out of like MPK of like twenty five, fifteen, eighteen, something like that. And we took two years in order to get it to that point. And we had great sweet corn, but it you can't. Buy, you can't grow sweet corn, and at, at some point last year, I think they were like 12 and a half, year, 12 and a half cents or 14 cents an ear uh, at the peak. I can't grow it that cheap. Unless you have a field and you're on a homestead or, or that capability of growing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of plants at a time, it would make sense. But for a typical backyard where you're maybe growing 20 plants peak, it, it just the, the real estate is what I'm looking at. Um, chickpeas, drying beans, again, a lot of quali- lot of plants in order to get a good quantity of harvest off of those. So those are some things in which we would ask you, does it make sense for you to grow it or does it make sense for you to put a more prolific, more prospering plant in that place and find those items the, the onions, the potatoes, broccoli, cauliflower, strawberries, sweet corn, chickpeas, drying beans, other places, farmer's market, pick your own farm, and focus on the other plants in which you know you can make a lot grow in a very small space throughout the summer months. Absolutely. Well, summer is getting closer. For many of us, we hope and can't wait for that day to come as it is still chilly, um, but Whether it comes next week, next month, or in two days, the grubs and beetles are already there waiting to share your yard with you. (laughs) That's absolutely correct. Um, Spring is just around the corner, and there's all sorts of grubs and beetles that are, you know, laying their eggs in your turf, and, you know, you have to control them somehow. Well, you can control them with Grub Gone. It, it can be applied to your turf, your garden, around ornamentals, controls grubs, and lessens the impacts of the beetles that they're going to have on your yard this summer. Easy to use and apply with a commercial spreader or irrigate right into the soil. Biologically, specifically ma- uh, created to target grubs and beetles and not harm beneficial insects such as ladybugs, butterflies, and bees. And to be honest, it's the only non-chemical that works. You can find out more at phylumbioproducts.com. That's P-H-Y-L-L-O-M bioproducts.com. And if you use code GARDENTALK10, 
you will save 10% off your orders. And that's phylumbioproducts.com. Hang around. When we come back, Lawrence Aubrey will be with us. He is a soil expert and forestry expert. You're listening to The Garden with Joey and Holly radio Have show. Have a garden question? Give Joey and Holly a call now or anytime 24-7. Just dial 1-800-927-SHOW. If you can't get through, leave a message and they will call you back. Call now 1-800-927-SHOW. Carpenter bees cause costly structural damage to wood siding, decks, doors, eaves, and railings. Our solution is Trapstick from Rescue. It catches carpenter bees all season long. Trapstick uses no pesticides. Carpenter bees are enticed by colors and pattern and get stuck on the adhesive. Save your wood structures from damage from carpenter bees with Trapstick from Rescue. Made in the USA by the makers of the popular Rescue Fly and Yellow Jacket Traps. Learn more at CarpenterBeeControl.com. That's CarpenterBeeControl.com. Protect your plants from damage with the 3-in-1 Plant Guard and Special Blend Fertilizer. Visit IVOrganics.com. Use promo code RADIO10 to save 10% off your order. Dig planting holes from a comfortable standing position. Step, twist, pull, and plant. Visit ProPlugger.com. Straw bale gardening is all the rage. Get your bale started easily with the Bell Buster Straw Bale Conditioning Formula. This is the only product that has been specifically formulated for use in straw bale gardening. Each unit contains 250 million colony forming units of trichoderma, fungi, and bacillus bacteria in addition to the fertilizer itself produces fantastic results with a bountiful production of vegetable crops start with the best to get the best traditional or organic formula take the guesswork out of conditioning your straw bale go to bellbuster.com to find out more have you ever tried to carry all your tools and supplies on your tractor you fumble around looking for the right one unsafely holding them while you drive big tool rack developed a range of carry-all systems that attaches to your compact tractor in seconds creating a mobile workstation that allows you to safely carry your tools and supplies big tool racks telescoping wheel system and three-point hitch connections allows you to quickly attach and detach the carry-all system for easy storage working around the house the homestead or the farm big tool rack has your back and all your tools use code my rack five for five percent off purchases at bigtoolrack.com find out why we're built to haul it all take the guesswork out of composting with hot bin composting quickly break down food scraps within 30 to 90 days find out more at hotbincomposting.com this week's garden tip is sponsored by the amazing dr zymes eliminate and prevent garden garden pest with their 100% all-natural, all-in-one insecticide and fungicide. Experience powerful natural protection from insects, fungus, mold, and mildew. Try a free sample. Visit drzymes.com forward slash garden talk. When applying the amazing Dr. Zymes, the key is to cover the plant under the leaves and on top, stem and fruit. It will not hurt and can be done the day of harvest too. Foliar feeding is used to feed the plant by applying liquid fertilizer directly to the leaves. Plants can absorb essential elements through their leaves. This will prevent pest problems and fungal problems and ensure a higher rate of success. Dr. Zymes is OMRI listed, safe up to the time of harvest, and doesn't leave a residue. That helpful garden tip was sponsored by the amazing Dr. Zymes. Eliminate and prevent garden pests with their 100% all-natural, all-in-one insecticide and fungicide. Experience powerful natural protection from insects, fungus, mold, and mildew. Try a free sample. Visit drzymes.com forward slash garden talk. Jung Seed Company is a family-owned and operated gardening company since 1907 with the largest selection of seeds and plants online. Use code 10TG22 to receive 10% off your order at jungseed.com. That code again is 10TG22. Thanks for listening to The Garden with Joy and Holly radio show. As you've heard through the program, many companies offering coupon codes to help you save on great products. If you've missed any of those coupon codes, you can go to our parent website, thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com, and click on the Money tab at the top of the page, and they're all listed for you. The Garden with Joy and Holly radio show is brought to you by the following. Rootmaker, Dripworks, Pomona Universal Pectin, Phylum Bioproducts, Tree Diaper, Chapin Manufacturing Incorporated, Deer Defeat, Water Hoop. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Welcome back to the Garden with Join Holly Radio Show, rocking through another hour of free 
entertaining gardening advice. Another thing in which you can use for your garden, we've talked about it through the program, is you got to feed your soil. We've talked about it on a lot of programs. you got to feed your soil to feed the plants, and Simple Grow does just that with 100% worm castings. Are you worried about your plant growth? Provide your plants with what they need to grow to their potential. Uh, Simple Grow offers 100% organic worm castings at simplegrow.com. Unlike any other worm casting products, when you order from Simple Grow, you are getting 100% worm castings. You, you know, we've seen this in the grocery store. The package is getting smaller, but the price gets bigger. Mm -hmm. Simple Grow, you get what you pay for. You get all worm castings, no fluff, no none of that, just all worm castings. Absolutely. And they are there to, you know, promote your, promote your soil structure and aeration with Simple Grow All Natural and odor-free worm castings. There's only one ingredient, worm castings. No chemicals or additives will seep into your food, and it doesn't smell like other fertilizers. For indoor and outdoor use, you can buy the, buy the bag, bundle, ton, or truckload. You can check out what Simple Grow 100% worm castings can do for your plants and order today at simplegrow.com. Well, Holly, let's go to the Proclamation Hotline, uh, brought to you by Proclamation Goods, and bring in our guest for this week. Lawrence Dean Alberti is the owner of Deep Roots Microbiome. He, he is an expert of soil, the lifeblood of plants. Welcome to the program. Hi. Thank you guys both for having me on this program. I'm very honored to be here. Well, we thank you for taking time out of your day, not only to educate Holly and myself as we bring guests on for that purpose, but to educate all of our listeners across the country as well. So with that being said, soil is, uh, is vital to healthy plants, but some people think feeding your plants versus building your soil is better. Are they wrong and why? Well, let's get into this. It's not that people are wrong. They have a common goal and it's for healthy plants and they need a partner that they should be healthy through soil, through life, and the plant, no matter what type of plant they are, growing they're looking for the best outcome so when growing healthy soil the outcome should always be that if your plan on eating this plant or the product of the plant that is given through the plant then the goal is to make sure that these food sources are delivered and to the right amounts so when you look at what are the available communications between the soil and the roots through creating a vast network of mycelium connections underground that works together with fungi and bacteria, you can solve a lot of problems. And that is working with the microbiome through the soil and getting the communications moving. Well, and you, you say that, and it comes to my mind over, let's just pick the last 70 years, the food the in the the vitamins and the minerals in the food that once was in our food has no longer is, is not in our food because the soil doesn't have what it needs to feed the plant properly in order to feed us correctly am, am i close to that no you are very on top of that because this is true as our soil is depleted and the energy that is gone out of the soil we're looking at how to revitalize that soil and sometimes that soil needs a boost. And then when you work with the specific microbes that can unlock that soil potential, that's where you can break open their shells, pull in that vital part of the nutrients, the amino acids, well within that plant. Now remember, the mycorrhizals, the, the uproot takes have got to start talking to each other. And my theory and everybody else that we talk around the world is that the roots have to make that vital connection in the soil for that to be open. And that's where you have the bacterium and the fungi that have got to work together. Well, let's talk about the adding things to your soil. A lot of people drink coffee, and coffee grounds can be added to your soil. We know it's a, a benefit to do uh, that. Talk more about the adding coffee grounds to the soil and what the do's and maybe the don'ts to doing what you think may be the right way. Oh, I love this question. I get to talk about this a lot with a lot of colleagues and around the area, and there are frequent anecdotal recommendations for the use of product spent coffee grounds. And we're talking a lot of grounds out there. I mean, you know, when I was doing some research, 
I was gathering over 60 pounds of spent coffee grams from Starbucks. And I was amazed by just how much I could use. Now, when we look at the coffee grounds in agricultural and gardens, either through direct soil applications or after composting with the other urban organic waste, we were looking at studies that can investigate the scientific basis for direct applications of spent coffee grounds and their influence on different things like the pH, nitrogen preferences, soil types, application rates. We specifically consider impacts upon the plant growth, soil, hydrology, and nitrogen transformation processes were some of the big things that you look at. So increasing the spent coffee grounds and amending those into the soil, you had to increase water holding capacity, but, and I repeat, but also decrease some horticultural plant growth. Subsequently, weed growth was diminished and there's clear evidence that nitrate immobilizations in some spent coffee grounds could go on. So overall, growth suspension was not explained, and the soil pH changes in nitrogen need to be addressed more specifically. So one of the things that you got to do is close that loop within the food production. And I do believe that if you have spent coffee grounds, and you can utilize them in your garden and understanding it's going to take the microbes and the bacteria to break it down and then work its way into each plant. It can be done and it can be done to the best of knowledge with everybody. Um, and one of the biggest things that most people in our region is pine trees. One of our researchers led us to find the Austrian pines by using spent coffee grounds really improved the needle quality of a lot of the spruces, something that we're not expecting. That's, that's awesome. So if someone wants to increase worm production in their soil, should they feed the soil to encourage worms to come to their soil, or should they be bringing in worms from outside resources? And, and wow. what, is, what is the best method here? Okay, so this is also a very delicate question, and it's with the times that we're having now. So let's all remember that soil is a living thing with all sorts of moving parts and with the understanding that we should look at the goals used in creating healthy earthworm populations and to keep growing. So helping with organic matter, using more microbes to help that organic matter be functional for the earthworms and these are things that you're looking at is biodiversity. And with biodiversity, there's so many different earthworms out there that cross each other's paths. They work in formations and it's just a wonderful cycle. So by saying that you should always, always utilize the best methods that you have. And if you have to purchase earthworms into your program, I think that's a very, complementary program to someone's garden but just please be aware that when you are purchasing earthworms try to use your local earthworms that are there because of you know some of these really nasty things that are being out there with hammerhead earthworms and jumping earthworms here in the midwest it is a reason to be concerned but utilize your natural earthworms and enjoy the outcome that they can give you in your garden Definitely. So we are talking with soil um, expert Lawrence Dean Alberti. Well, <clears throat> let, let me ask you this. When we talk about the health of the soil, uh, hydration, I would assume, is one of the key elements in order to make everything bind together or do what it needs to do. And one way in which you can hydrate the soil is using a product which sponsors our program, which is the tree diaper. Is, is that true that hydration is one of the keys to making all this work? Oh, it is far the best way to get hydration. And as part of what I do for our state of Missouri, as our Missouri Community Forestry Council also, is, you know, we, we look at for trees, for instance, and we're right now in Arbor Day month and trying to get trees to grow. And what the tree diaper has shown outside of my view and within my view of the state is that having the tree diaper 
has a way of hydrating our plants and our trees. And But one of the things that I love about this product is that once it's hydrated and it's been in the place, is pulling back that tree diaper and focusing directly where it laid. And by doing that, you will see an earthworm population, centipedes, roly polies, biodiversity has increased under the tree diaper. The tree diaper is meant to hydrate, but the other factors is that it is improving soil health. And now we can focus on other factors underneath that tree diaper that I would love to see move on into the science and research realm. So kudos to the tree diaper. It's, it's whether it's in the garden mat or in your plant, it has really shown me the way within our own orchards. Yeah, we, we really do like the tree diaper. So if you're going to add compost or raised bed mix to your raised beds, what are pros and cons to both and is one favorable over the other? Okay, so with this, the best understanding that compost is like a science project to me and to everybody else. It has added values to the meaning that it goes into the mix. Somehow it will come out into the plants that you are going to grow. Now remember, planting is growing. So by growing it, you're adding that compost right into the soil after it's done. And everybody's compost is never gonna be the same. It's always gonna be different. So pass or fail, sometimes you have to accept that your compost may need a little bit more of this or a little less of that. That's the reason why we are all given that scientific merit of growing plants and figuring out what works and what doesn't work. So growing as being a steward of this earth, we must do our best with compost and look at biodiversity that will add into the mix of your program. Microbes into the compost is only complete when you add the best soil. So with that being said, I think everybody should look at their compost, adding it to the raised beds and understanding the growth potential within the soil and keep this process going. Um, it's been going on for ages and I think everybody should learn from a great gardener about composting and move it forward. And if you aren't, if you're not able to produce as much compost as you want and you purchase it, you want to purchase it uh, from somebody or a place in which they can track from the very beginning what's going on because you get what you pay for. El Cheapo stuff, it's uh, not that good. We we went down that road and we advise people not to. Oh, I agree wholeheartedly. And that's one of the things that you have to look at is you, you do pay for what you get. And I think that's very wise that people should fully understand that. Um, bad compost can have you know, some bad parts into it that could damage your plant, whether it's pythium, botrytis, um, root rot, and then you have to reach for that medicine cabinet and add some bursillus amyloquifacia in order to correct these problems. So maybe that's something we should look at in the future is composting and then adding a bursillus once that gets put in around your plant to suppress the bad effects. But they're all be mitigated into how we view our world and how our world views us. Absolutely. Well, we've really enjoyed having you on the program. Um, can you tell us our listeners how to get more information um, about you or how, how to access your great helpful information? Yeah. So one of the best ways that I tell everybody would be either go on our website and that's deep roots, microbiome dot earth, not dot com. And then the other one would be, the YouTube and type in YouTube and go to Deep Roots Microbiome and pull up the video on YouTube and that's very helpful and that explains the reason why we set this course to discover and open the education to the public that normally does not understand or but would love to understand how we go about doing this. Well, Dean, we greatly appreciate your time and the vast amount of knowledge in which you've allowed us to receive in the short period of time we've had you on uh, and, and our listeners. We thank you for that very much. 
Thank you so much. Absolutely. And when we come back, it's your garden questions, our garden answers. It is the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show. Got a question for Joey and Holly? Send it via email anytime to gardentalkradio at gmail.com. With the right tools, plant maintenance is easy and more effective. Ironwood Tool Company has the right tools for your project. From pruners to loppers to saws and shears and cleanup tools, get the right tool for this season, making your job much easier. Find them all at ironwoodtools.com. Pomona's Universal Pectin is a high-quality pectin that gels reliably with low amounts of any sweetener. If you're trying to reduce the amount of sugar in your diet, You'll love Pomona's Universal Pectin. Now you can make healthy homemade jams and jellies sweetened to your taste. You can use sugar or honey to sweeten. Pomona's Universal Pectin keeps indefinitely when stored in an airtight container. Easy to use, versatile, and comes with directions and recipes in every box. Find out more and where to buy at PomonaPectin.com. Also available at natural food stores and online. We know that you appreciate the value of a beautifully landscaped yard, but tackling such a project yourself can seem way too complicated, right? Bloomin' Easy plants are the answer. Their plants are low maintenance and offer exceptional beauty and color for your yard. Plus, they offer free seasonal care reminders with simple how-to videos tailored to the plants that you choose. With Bloomin' Easy on your side, creating the yard that you've always wanted becomes as easy as plant, water, and relax. Check them out at your local garden center or by visiting bloomineasyplants.com. Brought to you by Blue Ribbon Organics, providing locally made organic compost and soil blends for gardens, farms, landscaping, and more. Visit BlueRibbonOrganics.com or call 262-497-8539 to find their products nearest you. Deer Defeat is an all-natural repellent to keep deer, rabbits, and groundhogs away from your precious plants. Deer Defeat protects your plants day and night dries clear and odorless it will not clog your sprayer deer defeat works for 30 days through rain snow and freeze safe effective and works on rabbits money back guarantee to purchase go to deerdefeat.com and use code radio to save 10 percent on your order deer defeat it can't be beat ship drop is a website you can sign up for free wood chip mulch delivery right to your door for free ship drop connects homeowners and gardeners with tree services who are trying to get rid of their wood chips you can also sign up to get free logs and firewood go to chipdrop.com to learn more and sign up for a free account thanks for listening to the garden with joe and holly radio show as you've heard through the program many companies offering coupon codes to help you save on great products if you've missed any of those coupon codes, you can go to our parent website, the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com, and click on the money tab at the top of the page, and they're all listed for you. The Gardening with Joy and Holly Radio Show is brought to you by the following Tree Ripe, Covers in All, Ironwood Tool Company, Timber Pro Coatings, Blue Ribbon Organics, Natural Green Products, Algae Men, Dr. Zine, Happy Leaf LED, Rescue. Big Tool Rack, Hot Bin Composting, Proclamation Goods. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Welcome back to the Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show. Thank you for being with us this hour as we bring garden content to you. If you want to be part of the program, you got a question, you can certainly send that over to GardenTalkRadio at gmail.com. That's GardenTalkRadio at gmail.com. Or if you would like to give us a call, you can certainly do that on the Proclamation Goods Hotline, brought to you by Proclamation Goods, the, the Proclamation Hotline, brought to you by Proclamation Goods. And that number is 1-800-927-7469, one 927 show Proclamation Goods creates cookware for the eco-conscious home chef. Their pans are non-toxic, have a lifetime warranty, and are made in Wisconsin. Their award-winning stainless steel Proclamation Duo cookware set is a 12-inch skillet and a stock pot that doubles as a wok. Best of all, the skillet and stock pot hinge together to form a Dutch oven. It's two pans with a versatility of 10, empowering you to cook more with less. If you care about your health and strive for a more sustainable lifestyle, then Proclamation Goods is for you. Supplies limited, so order yours now at proclamationgoods.com. All right, let's uh, go to Ed, who listens to our program on WNAX 570 AM, and we'll see what his question 
is. Yes, this is Ed Worthington, Minnesota. My question is um, Jersey Jersey Night Asparagus, two year old crowns. Um, Worthington is the zone three. I'm trying to introduce this to my nephew here in northwest Arkansas. Uh, does asparagus need to go through the winter freeze as rhubarb does? And uh, Jersey night, will they be fine here in a 6B zone in uh, northwest Arkansas? I got 10 uh, two-year-old asparagus crowns, and my question is, does that make a pretty good productive bed, produce me quite a bit, or is that more than am I overboard on that? Well, Holly, can we help him out with that? Uh, the ten asparagus, that's a good start. Good start on that. Yeah, and then as far as the asparagus being needed to be overwintered, um, no. They they will grow in zone 6B. Right, fine. Just fine. Uh, they will grow anywhere from zone 2 to 11. So a um, lot of versatility that asparagus has. Let's go to Dave, who's listening to us on WHKW 1228. AM and 96.9 FM with the word Cleveland, and he's got a question about compost. My name's Dave. I'm in outside of Canton, Ohio. You were talking about compost, and uh, my question is, I've got an accumulation of about two years' worth of compost in a big black, not real big, but a vertical black compost bin. I want to deal with it, utilize it. I was wondering, I don't have a rototiller or a tractor, so I'm dealing with well, I got a steel tooth rake kind of like thing. Should I dump it, spread it on the ground where I want to start a garden this season, and then let it cook for a month? And then, if so, is there anything I should spray on it after that as a fungicide? So when I put my seedlings in there, they don't get messed up by the any any you know fungal matter. Thank you. Bye. Well, thank you, Dave, for that, and thank you, Ed, for your question. And the question that Dave had was. Uh, you can just put the compost right on the ground wherever you're going to uh, grow. And uh, what about the spraying, the, the concern of the fungi spray? Sure. So the fungicide is not necessary. Um, your compost may have mold or even like some fungus-looking stuff in it. But that's it. good. But that's good. It means that it's it's doing what it needs to do. Mold and fungus are natural decomposers. So um, you can just lay it out. You know, wherever you want to lay it out and you can let it bake in the sun because sometimes it gets a little murky, mucky in the bin. And that'll dry it out a bit and then you'll have that nice, rich, dark humus to grow in. Absolutely. If you want to be like Ed or Dave, you can certainly give us a call on the Proclamation Hotline at 1-800-927-SHOW. And if we can't get to you, leave a message and we will call you back. Uh, is it true, Holly, using old milk in the garden helps and acts like a fertilizer? Um, well, you know, old milk does contain about 3.1% protein, and protein is about 1,6 nitrogen. So milk would contain, contain about half of a percent of nitrogen, so 0.5% nitrogen. Um, so that's usually like bagged fertilizer as 10, which is 40% nitrogen, and then other ones like organic fertilizers have 2% nit nitrogen. So milk is... A fertilizer, it's a weak fertilizer, but it's something that you can you can use. Yeah, if you gotta get rid of it, dump it in the garden if it's gone bad. So and then water it in. Yeah, I would water it in to dilute it. Yes. Yeah. Well with that being said, we are out of time and we thank you for yours. Did you miss any portion of the program today or would like to revisit it? Well you can certainly do that by going to our parent website, the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com and clicking on the season six tab at the top of the page. Or you can send us an email, gardentalkradio at gmail.com, and we will send you a link to this program. Tune in next week as we will be discussing farmer's markets, as well as Be Friendly Gardens. And our guest is author with his second book, Ben Cohen, and will answer your garden questions. So until next week, for Hi Baird. I'm Joy Baird. And until next week, we will see you in the garden. <laughs>